What's up everybody? This is the Jackhammer 2711 and I'm gonna be coming at you with something a little bit different today. This is my first ever action figure review. Uh, hopefully I'll be doing a few more of these as the days go by, the time goes by, whenever I have the time. But uh, I'd like to apologize ahead of time for the way I sound. I'm currently battling a cold. But such as it is, we must toil on, we must continue on fighting the good fight. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing the Masters of the Universe Classics, Flutterina. Flutterina, my first action figure review is going to be a princess of power action figure. Um, if you would have told me that whenever I started thinking about doing action figure reviews, I'd have called you a bald-faced liar. But, such as it is... Flood Arena here comes to us from our, our good friends at Mattel. Uh, as you see, just taking a, a little bit closer look at her in packaging. You know, she kind of comes with her whole uh, more filmation look. Um, she's got that uh, that really, really good head sculpt that you can see right there. And Four Horsemen always seem to knock out the, the female head sculpts out of the park. Uh, but she comes packaged in your standard Master Universe Classics blister card packaging. Um, you know, you got your Master Universe Classics up there. Princess of Power sticker, the Flood Arena. Beautiful flying lookout figure there on the front. Uh, you know, you've got your, your nice uh, details with the lightning bolts on the side there. Um, the, uh, you know, kind of yellow and green um, brick pack you get packaging there. If you've uh, ever had a Masters of the Universe Classics figure, you know exactly what you're getting from this packaging. Taking a look from the back, you know, at the top you've got there your, your Masters of the Universe Classics logo up top. Uh, pretty standard there couple of the figures that you can uh, acquire more than likely through eBay or your other um, secondary market outlets but you know you got She-Ra most powerful woman in the universe Frosta Flood Arena the figure that we've got here in hand you got Glimmer up at the top here you got a uh, cast Spella and of course Bo um, the lone male member of the Great Rebellion. Taking a look down here at the bottom, you've got Flutterina's bio. Uh, I'm not going to read that to you guys. If you care to take a look at it, um, go ahead and pause the video and do so. Uh, you see her name is Abby Denote. I really, really wonder a lot of times where they come up with these names for these bios. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a call out to someone who works for Mattel or for Four Horsemen. I'm not sure. Uh, it's entirely possible they do that a lot, but Abby Denote, um, that has absolutely nothing to do with fluttering arenas. So, uh, good job, Mattel. Uh, and then, of course, at the bottom, MaticCollector.com, where collectors are king and collect them all. Bottom of the packaging, all this legal hoo-ha that nobody ever reads or even cares to read. Uh, but anyway, this is Flood Arena. Let's go ahead and bust her out of her plastic prison and see just exactly what Flutterina is working with. All right, everyone, we have Flutterina here out of her plastic prison. And uh, before we take a look at her uh, in totality and what she's got going on, uh, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at her accessories. Let's go ahead and just place her out of the way there for a second. Um, first off, Flutterina wouldn't be a member of the Great Rebellion if she didn't come with the standard issue Great Rebellion shield painted in a color scheme that matches her outfit um, I'd hate to be the, uh, the, the armor because, for the Great Rebellion, because it's basically the same job. You make a shield, you find out what color outfit the person's wearing, and you paint it. But, uh, it's nice. It, it is what it is, though. It's that same shield that always comes, of course, on the back. You see it's sculpted to fit on her left arm. Uh, it's pretty much how they do it. Comes with this kind of purplish gem in the middle there, as you can see, maybe. Um, it is painted in orange with some uh, metallic orange painted detail around the edges here and on these raised portions of the shield. But it is what it is. It's the standard Masters of the Universe Classics Great Rebellion membership badge of honor, the, the female shield. Uh, put that off to the side there. She does come with another accessory. Um, it's this really nice sword. It's, it's kind of a, a similar sword that we've seen with some of the other females. Um, Captain Glenn being one of them um, Queen Marlena whatever you care to call her and also uh, the battleground Tila came with a sword similar to this this one however has a pink 
hilt and handle as you can see there nice pink color um, painted with a nice metallic silver for the blade um, once again we've seen this sword before it's 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 pretty standard but it's really really nice they do have some sculpting detail there for the handle just to you know let you know hey this is a handle this is where you hold it if you're gonna chop someone's head off um, you know you're not gonna wanna hold this in you're gonna hold this in uh, that pretty much serves its purpose right there so setting that aside now we'll take a look at really the thing that's going to make flood arena be flood arena and that's these wings um, of course whenever they come packaged they come packaged this direction right here so you're seeing these this side here it's got some nice pink and white paint detail on it there but that's just the back bam you turn these bad boys around and whoo whoo man you really got some stuff going on here uh, just taking a look at this one here you've got of course a white background right there for the bulk of the wing and then you've got your pink here and your purple details and then you've got a little bit of a little bit of orange detail kind of a burnt orange here here and here and then a nice blue here and here on the wings um, of course some more orange painted detail here and then you have your peg with your articulation joint there that's going to plug into her back uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second but as you can see <clears throat> it's just a peg on a hinge joint that'll plug into her back and uh, we'll give these wings some uh, some posability whenever they're on her back you know it's 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 not going to be anything Marvel Legends esque or uh, even DC Universe Classics esque kind of articulation but you will get to get to pose these wings somewhat whenever they're plugged into her back uh, now taking a look at the the figure herself Flutterina before we plug in those wings let's take a closer look at the figure I mean you can see the four horsemen say what you want about the female figures from from Masters Universe Classics uh, I've always been a big fan of them myself uh, they are really really beautifully sculpted um, she's got a beautiful face sculpt right there of course you see as the poor horse normally do and then she's got this purple hair a um, little bit lighter purple than, than what the camera's showing uh, the camera's processing it a little bit differently than uh, what it actually is but it's kind of a lighter purple and it does have that nice that's nice wash on it to really bring out the detail a lot of great sculpting detail, detail with these individually sculpted strands of hair uh, that the four horsemen you know are, are, are known for doing they, they really do a great job on the female head sculpts and, and the hair and everything like that um, you know going back here to the front of the figure she has the the gold choker around her neck there really really nice a little bit of sculpted detail here and there also on the belt the gold belt the kind of sculpted to match the choker there um, with that sculpting detail in the middle for the belt buckle uh, you know she does have her orange outfit this is of uh, the figure as as it's shown it, it matches up more closely with the uh, the filmation appearance of the character than it does the vintage action figure but uh, it does have some of those vintage action figure callbacks as well if you've ever seen the vintage action figure you'll know exactly what I'm talking about but she does have a pink uh, I'm sorry rather an orange outfit um, you know just on the standard female buck She's got the top portion here sculpted as a separate piece. And then you've got the skirt piece down here at the bottom. Uh, kind of with this, this almost flower petal motif down there at the bottom. Uh, it's really, really cool. Um, and it worked its way all the way around into the back. Uh, you can see right there all the little sculpted detail pieces there on the skirt. It's really, really cool. Kind of a flower petal looking deal. So uh, I guess, you know, since she's a butterfly she would have some flower details in her outfit uh, taking a look at the arm bracers here um, they're also painted in a nice gold color uh, with some nice sculpting detail here kinda looks like one of those Easter lily type flowery deals you know where they come over and they just kinda lay over underneath their own weight but a uh, really cool sculpting detail there on the bracer I really like it I dig it a lot it's really really cool really unique to the figure and of course right here on on her chest piece she does have a uh, some more uh, sculpted pieces on her her bodice there I guess you would call it um, in blue she's got like a blue gem and then these little butterfly wing type things on her uh, her boobies right there uh, sculpted in a really really nice color blue the contrast between the blue and the orange is really really nice I really like that it's really really cool and then you know coming and taking a look down here at her at her feet there 
She's got her She-Ra boots, her Great Rebellion boots with that, uh, kind of that Easter lily, I guess you would call it, motif here, where they just kind of come up and fall over on their own weight. Uh, kind of matches between this and the bracer there. So it's really cool. It's really cool whenever they can, uh, you know, call out some details that match on a figure, you know, where the boots match in the bracer and things like that. It's really, really nice. Uh, the boots are also in that orange color, kind of a burnt orange. Uh, the details here around the edges, though, around the edges of the boots and right here on this, this sculpted detail, those are kind of painted in a metallic orange. Uh, it's not so metallic that it's really bright and, and, and jumping out and, and really providing a, an eyesore on it, but it's just a, a really nice touch, a really nice detail that the Four Horsemen are, you know, that they really are known for. It's what they do whenever they sculpt these figures. They, they paint and sculpt them so well. But, uh, you know, that's kind of Flutterina there. That's what she's got going on. Take a look at the front of the figure there in full. Get a nice side view there over. Get a back view there. And of course, whenever you look at the back of the figure, you can't help but notice right there, underneath her hair, she does have a couple articulation holes there. One there, one there. And the hair is sculpted in such a way that it provides a couple gaps with which to plug in Flutterina's wings. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and do that. It's pretty simple. You take your wing, you want to make sure whenever you're plugging the wings into her back that this pink side is facing you. If you have her facing her back facing you like this, the pink side is going to be facing you. That way whenever you have the wings plugged into her back, you're looking at her from the front, these colorful colorful parts are going to be in the front. So you just take your little wing there, it's pretty simple. You've got your articulation point there, your little plug-in port. You just take it and give them a push till you hear that little click. And the wing's in place on that side. And of course you'll take the opposite side, do the same thing. It kind of helps if you, if you turn the articulation joint this way, that way you really have a good point with which to push and put some force on it right there to get it snapped in but you'll put it back in there give it a push till you hear that nice little click which I haven't heard yet unfortunately and we're pushing and we're pushing and we're in there we're in there no we're not wow why are they making it so hard to to click in I might have to do this off camera, it looks like. Ah, there we go. And that is just Chewbacca telling me I'm getting a text. But we can ignore Chewbacca for now because it's not 2015. We don't need to start talking about Star Wars Episode 7 just yet. Oh, but we will eventually. Anyway, here now you have Flutterina put together, assembled, if you will. Uh, and again, guys, like I said, this is my first action figure review. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of playing with the camera angles a little bit. Uh, not really getting as much of the figure in frame as I would like. Kind of far back. But uh, anyway, that's what she looks like assembled. As you can see there, she looks really, really good. Those paint details on the wings, you know, the orange matches up with the orange of her costume. The uh, the blue is a really nice blue color here that matches up with her bodice piece right there. Um, and she just looks really, really fantastic. Really, really cool. The Four Horsemen do a really good job on this stuff. Taking a look at the back of the figure, you can see how the wings plug in and how the, the hair kind of falls over. You've got this piece of hair going over the backs of the wings. And then here on the sides, her hair falls into the front of the wings on both sides here. So really, really nice. The wings fit in securely once you get them in. And uh, yeah, so here we go, Flutterina. That's what she looks like all totally put together. Uh, going over her articulation, her articulation uh, real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Her head is on that standard Masters Universe Classics female buck. Uh, so it, it's intended to go side to side, but with the wings plugged in, 
the way the hair hits the wings, it is going to hinder that, that head articulation just a bit. You're not going to get a whole lot of side to side motion on this thing, as you can see there. It does kind of go forward just a bit and back, but with those wings in place, you're really going to have hindered articulation there at the head, uh, which of course the head does pop off like every other, oh man, just hit my camera there, like every other Masters Universe Classics action figure. You can see the joint there, that ball joint, there goes the head. Pops back on just like every other Masters of the Universe Classics action figure that's on that ball joint there. Uh, but the head, it, the articulation is going to be hindered because of the wings. Uh, speaking of the wings, you know, you've got articulation points there, so they will flap backwards and forwards like that. You can kind of rotate them a little bit. The hair hits right there, the wing, whenever it articulates up. You can see it hitting the hair right here. But it will kind of rotate that way. Uh, and of course, the flapping motion on uh, both wings there. You will get some flapping motion. But uh, Orm's pretty standard for the Masters Universe Classic. They go all the way around. Uh, of course, they'll hit the wings right there, but they will go all the way around uh, if you work with it a little bit. Um, up and down. You got your bicep swivel. Goes all the way around right there at the bicep. Uh, single point elbow, pretty standard, you know, 90 degree joint there. Uh, she does have a swivel at the wrists. Waist twist there. She does have the standard Master Universe Classics legs, so they will go uh, about that far forward. The skirt hinders it just a little bit right here, but not too, too bad. It's not too bad, you still should be able to get her sitting. Definitely will be able to get her in a straddling pose if you want to put her on one of the horses. The legs do go out and in. Um, swivel there at the thighs. Single point here at the knee. And single point down there at the ankle. Got that rocker joint. Nice rocker joint that comes on the female action figure. You see it rocks at the side like that. Pretty tight. Nice tight joints. Nothing loose that I can see or tell. Um, no boot cut. No swivel at the boot here. So that's always unfortunate when they don't have that. But... If you look at the sculpt of the boot, it's not really, wouldn't really been feasible to put a boot cut in right there. You really would have broken up the sculpt, in my opinion, just a little bit too much. Uh, let's go ahead and put her accessories on there. Of course, you got the shield clips here onto the, the left arm as it's intended to. You got her sword. Slide that in right there. She's got a really, really good grip on the sword. It's not loose at all. Uh, you know, and there's her shield plugged in right there but uh so yeah this is Flutterina really really nice figure uh, of course that does come make us a little bit closer to completing our uh, our vintage princess of power great rebellion there uh, this figure was available on MattyCollector.com. I did get it as a member of the Club Eternia subscription uh, a few months back. I think this was actually this past month's figure. I think that was a uh, an August release. So uh, Flood Arena was the monthly August 2014 Matty Collector sub figure. Um, it was available as a day of sale item. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think she's sold out at this point, but I'm not exactly 100% sure. You might check MattyCollector.com if you don't have her yet and you're interested in getting her. It's a day of sale item, but she was a part of the sub. Uh, and uh, I'm sure, even if she does say she's sold out, gone for good or whatever, they likely will re-release her at some point later on in the year. Their customer service stock that they hold back that normally ends up, you know, for their Cyber Monday sales and things of that nature. So, um, anyway, guys, this is Flood Arena. Uh, let me know what you think of the review. Uh, you know, if you liked it, click like. Give me some feedback. I'm, I'm more, than, more than happy to receive feedback from you guys. Tell me some ways I can improve um, on my reviews. Uh, tell me the things I'm doing good. Tell me the things I'm not doing good. You know, I want to, you know, be as successful at this as, as humanly possible. You know, I'm not really in this to make, get followers or anything like that. I just really like action figures. And, um... Just really want to get involved with the, with the community, the uh, the review community, and uh, just put my thoughts on these out there. Sometimes I feel like a lot of times people can can review action figures and, and really get 
um, kind of skewed in their opinions of them because of their hatred or love for certain companies or certain toy lines, action figures. And uh, that's something that I hope not to do. I'm a big fan of Masters Universe Classics. Um, I think Mattel's handled the license fairly well with a few missteps here and there. But um, I hope to be objective in, in everything that I do. So, um, yeah, guys, comment, like, share, subscribe if you if you care to. If not, hey, that's totally cool, too. I'm, I'm not Mr. Uh, gonna take it hard if somebody doesn't subscribe or doesn't like the way I review an action figure. That's not me. So, anyway, guys, appreciate it. Thanks. And I'll see you guys on the flip side.